welcome back to another truck camper video. Today you can see I'm in the garage again. We're gonna do another recap video. This time talking about getting the camper mounted to the truck for the first time. Gonna cover some of the initial steps to mount the camper to the truck, talk about what the truck needed, needed some brackets and some airbags, and talk about that whole process of just getting the camper ready for the first time. If you're new to this channel, thanks for joining us. If you're not, welcome back. Appreciate you coming back again. Uh, this is the second part in a new series where I am just sitting in the garage with the camper. Uh, since I'm not out camping right now with my newborn child, I spend a lot of time at home. But we're just recapping a lot of the work I did before I started making videos. The most recent video, the one right prior to this, uh, recapped how I bought this camper for 300 bucks, how I had spent a long time looking for a camper just like this, and how excited I was to finally get it. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I would suggest you go check it out. I also talked about how I bought this camper really in the first place to use for mostly skiing, and how incredibly excited I was to have this camper. But once I got it home, and once kind of that rush of buying it for the first time wore off, I started to see maybe it needed some more work than I originally thought. But with all that, I'm so super excited to have purchased this camper. I absolutely love having it. And today we'll just get right into those new topics. So without any more, let's get started. Before we get into this, I do just wanna remind you that I actually have all this written out on my build page on wandathewest.com. So go check it out, link below, uh, if you ever wanna recap and get a little more detail on a lot of this work. Once I got the camper home and popped it up for the first time, started looking around, I saw that there was a lot of really good things about this camper. The good thing was that there was no major exterior interior damage, so that was a great start. Also, the canvas appeared to be relatively intact. There was a solar panel included already. It was a 20 watt solar panel, so pretty small, but hey, it was there. There was a deep cell battery. That's gonna save me from buying another one. It was just a Walmart brand, but I'm still using it today and it's still working great. So that was another huge plus. There was no water damage that I could initially find, so that was really good. And also the board on the cab over area had recently been replaced, probably because it had rotted out, but at least someone else had already fixed it up for me. So that was brand new and it looked pretty good. But on further inspection, there was some bad things that had to be fixed as well. First off, we were missing a vent uh, in the roof. So that had to be fixed because there was currently a big hole. Also in terms of lifting the roof, the rear did have a lifter panel, which seemed to be in decent shape, but the front, there was no lifter panel whatsoever. People were just using a two by four to hold the roof up. So that had to be fixed. The camper was incredibly dirty. Doesn't look like it had been cleaned in a very long time, so it just needed a thorough cleaning. The electrical system was a complete mess. There was some 120 stuff going on in here as well. I ended up ripping all of that out, redoing all the electrical, but that was a huge mess. And then actually on second thought, the canvas was in pretty rough shape. Uh, you could see some daylight through a lot of areas so we had to figure out what to do about that but still i was incredibly happy to have purchased this and again i talked about all that in the video prior now let's get into the new stuff so i bought this camper on labor day of 2015 and my goal was to have it up and running for ski season that year so it was roughly september by about november i wanted it to be operational with that, I had no major plans to redo anything, but I did have plans to get the truck and the camper made it together nicely. That's what this video is about. So before I even got started, I took the camper off, put it in my carport at the condo complex I was living so I could start to fix up a few things and get everything situated. Quick side note, my HOA was not happy with that plan. I got quite a few letters. I actually went to an HOA uh, meeting to try to get some sort of special arrangement so I could keep the camper in my carport, but uh, it ended up in a bit of a yelling match. I try not to do that type of stuff. I'm a pretty professional person most of the time, but uh, HOAs are the worst. Highly suggest you do everything in your power to stay the hell out of them. <laughs> Still, they were kind enough to give me a couple of weeks to get it out of the carport. And also they were cool with me keeping it on my truck full time. And so whatever floats their boat works for me. And so that was my goal, getting the truck fixed up enough to hold the camper all the time. In order to get the truck ready for the camper, the first thing I needed to focus on was mounting. Like I'd said before, when I brought it home, I was just using one single strap around the hooks for the tailgate absolutely not secure or safe. I wanted to get the proper mounting brackets. Now, I have a whole video that I just made actually a few months ago about mounting the camper to a Tacoma, but the gist of it is that the new Tacomas have composite beds. Because of that, you can't really drill holes in them that are structurally sound. So, Four Wheel Camper makes a special bed bar that uses the existing 
mounting holes for mounting the bed to the frame. It uses those holes and those bolts to mount this extra bar that then gives the camper a place to mount onto as well. I actually still have those bars for sale, so if anyone's looking for them, get in touch with me. I was actually super, super fortunate. I reached out to Chris down at Rocky Mountain Four Wheel Camper down in Denver and told him I was looking for some of these bed bars and he actually had an old set lying around that he sold me for the cheap. So I brought those home, I cleaned off some of the surface roughs, I painted them up again, Again, and they were good to go. The mounting process is pretty straightforward. You need a big T55 uh, star head. You need some PB blaster for those rusty bolts and you need some patience and a big lever arm. Four bolts all day and you've got these huge bars in the bed of your truck that are perfect for mounting this camper onto. A couple other notes on that project was I did use some washers to support the area under the bed because the bed is grooved. I needed to take up a little bit of volume there, but that was pretty straightforward. And also apparently four wheel camper is actually on V2 of those bed bars. They adjusted the first ones a little bit. I was using the first ones, had no problems. Also, they're literally just a piece of steel. If you have any metal working facilities, I'm sure you could make one yourself. Uh, again, mine is for sale. I'm in Boulder, Colorado. Reach out if you need them and I'll let you know if I still have them or not. Now with the bed bars in the truck ready for the camper to be mounted on, we had to get the camper a little better situated to fit the truck. So this is a seven foot fleet model. So this is the old seven foots. The fleet now comes in a six foot. This was designed for some old Tacomas or excuse me, old Toyotas, you know, around the same time this camper was built in 84. Since then, truck beds have had a lot higher sidewalls on them. And so this camper actually had too low of wings, the parts that stick out on the side that would interfere with the sidewalls of the camper. Because of that, when I first brought it home, essentially this camper was resting on the sidewalls of the truck. That's no good. You want the camper base resting on the base of your bed. So what I had to do was make like a spacer type of thing. Just out of some simple two by three wood, it was a very straightforward woodworking project. Uh, and that was just to take up some volume underneath the bed of this camper so that the, it sat on the bed of the truck rather than on the sidewalls of the truck bed. That was again one of the first projects I was doing for this camper. I was in my old condo complex where I did not have a garage. Huge thanks to my wife for letting me build that in our living room floor. A couple other features of that, we'll call it a riser, was that I actually installed some thick rubber mats as well. I just went to Home Depot and found a rubber mat, cut it up and had a bunch of strips just so that I had a little extra traction and also a little bit of elasticity in that. Um, I figured it would help kind of absorb some vibrations and things like that. As you can see, this riser piece of wood was its own freestanding thing, which was convenient to maybe move it around, but also is majorly inconvenient when actually mounting the camper to the truck. Uh, then I would have essentially three different things moving, the camper, the truck, and the riser in between it. Uh, in future, I'm just gonna be screwing those risers into the base of the camper. Would be way, way easier. So although that the whole lining up thing was kind of annoying in the three, four years that I used that riser, everything worked very, very well. So no issues there. And actually I did end up modifying that riser to utilize the space underneath the camper between the bed of the truck and the base of the camper. There was about an inch and a half slot there and I figured that would be perfect to hold a table. And so this was like right around the time that I actually started to uh, make videos, but for whatever reason, I have no document, either a photo or video of this process. But here's actually a quick clip from the first truck camping trip I had been on since redoing the entire camper. That was back in 2017. And it shows you how I made this little kind of trap door, if you would, to store a simple tailgating table. So that was actually super convenient. That trip was awesome, by the way. I'll link it below or up in a corner to encourage you to go check out that short three minute clip that shows how incredibly excited I was uh, in the camper for that first night. trip. The pullout bed actually broke on that trip. I had originally had very small pieces of wood to support the bed pullout and those were not sufficient. Everything kind of cracked under load. So that was no good. We ended up sleeping on the floor here. 
again that was our first trip since redoing the canvas and a, a big portion of the camper so i definitely threw a bit of a tizzy fit once that broke i was super upset at myself uh i think i called this camper my fortress of failure or something like that uh, but it was a good learning experience the bed is extremely secure now i beefed up those support pieces of wood and uh it goes to show my personal model is uh celebrate success acknowledge defeat and grow and we definitely had to do a bit of those last two after the bed failed on the very first trip so after that trip let's loop back to really 2015 when i just got in this camper and we now already have the brackets in the truck ready to hold this camper down but the truck also really needed some suspension modifications so i'll take a quick second to explain what my thought process was on this i went back and forth back and forth between either new or extra leaf springs or airbags originally i had thought i would take this camper on and off my truck bed pretty regularly and because of that i decided i wanted airbags it turns out once i finally use this i almost never take this thing off my truck probably because it's kind of a pain in the butt sometimes but regardless the airbags actually work pretty well so i actually just went on to uh what is it tacoma world and looked for someone selling a used airbag system for the second gen tacoma like i used to have and i was able to pick up a uh, firestone ride rights for almost nothing actually those ride rights came with uh both riser blocks for the rear and the front um and i actually didn't want the front riser blocks even though i have in my new truck now um, and so I sold those and actually got that whole ride right kit for almost nothing. Uh, in the rear, I did still have an inch riser block, but honestly, it did help a little bit. And then those airbags as well. So I won't go into all the details of installing those ride right airbags. And I'm sure there's probably some other great YouTube videos that do show it. I did have fun. This was one of the first time working on like kind of the inner suspension of a car for me. And it was very straightforward. Uh, remove the bump stops. Actually, before when I got into it, I thought I had to cut the bump stops for some reason. You just remove them. Uh, but I got out my like wood saw and literally cut these rubber bump stuff off. Um, if you're ever working on a car and you break out a wood saw, really maybe double check what you're doing. That was not the right move, but everything was fine in the end. Uh, it is a little, you gotta have some spare jacks and things like that in order to bend the leaf springs and get everything together. But it's really a Lego project, nuts and bolts, putting everything together. A couple things about those airbags was the press to fit fittings are so easy to use. I love that type of uh, tubing and that was really straightforward. And also the hardest part was probably just the rusty U-bolts. So my truck lived in the Northeast for a long time. So it had some rust underneath it. Those U-bolts have like threads that are very, very long. And you're just cranking on those forever in order to get them off finally. You swear they're cross threaded or something, but just keep throwing beep PB blaster on them and cranking on them and eventually they come off. So that's honestly the hardest part of the whole project was just unscrewing a bolt. Here's a quick picture of the truck without the camper, but with the air suspension on, I think at about 30 PSI in there. And you can see the truck ha did have a little bit of a nice rake to it. Uh, and that's with my old cap that I did end up selling uh, so to make room for the camper. But the airbag system, I think that was an afternoon project, even for someone I was pretty inexperienced at the time and it went super straightforward. So in hindsight, I've been very happy with those airbags. My new truck has airbags too. I think they're a great option for the four wheel camper uh, suspension modifications. I do think airbags and leaf springs would be the best of both worlds. And maybe I'm gonna be doing that on my new truck as well. So now that the truck is ready, it's time to talk about what I did to get the camper ready to go back on the truck. So the first thing that definitely had to be done if this thing was gonna live in a parking lot again was that the vent was missing. It was just a big hole in the roof. Again, no idea how there was no water damage with that. Don't know what happened. Maybe it blew off right before I bought it. I don't really know. I was super fortunate though. I had mentioned that to, again, Chris down at Rocky Mountain Four Wheel Camper when I was going down there to buy my bed brackets. And he told me actually he had a ton of spare vent lids because he ends up installing a lot of like fantastic vents into all of the new campers that come out. And so they just had these excess uh, basic vents lying around. He was kind enough to pass that on to me and I installed it in my roof. Again, nuts and bolts, some cleaning for sure. Uh, you had to clean off all the excess gunk that was around the vent and things like that. But again, the install process, super straightforward. Unfortunately, I don't have many photos of that. That was again, when I first got the camper, I was just starting to document everything. I didn't realize how deep I would get into documenting everything. 
but you can see that I did spend some time cleaning everything up. Um, you end up using something called butol tape, which I'll link to below, and then you just use your screws and some silicone epoxy, or not epoxy, silicone sealant, and everything goes together pretty pretty easily. Again, huge thanks to Chris down at Rock and Mountain Fort Worth Camper for offering that free vent to me. Uh, I was really appreciative of it at the time and continue to be so. It's really helped us out, and uh, I still use it to this day. I'll probably install an electric one soon, but it's been working very well since then. One other thing I decided to do real quick besides install the vent to make the camper appear to be more waterproof was that, as I had mentioned before, the board for the over cab area had recently been replaced or somewhat recently it looked like to me. So there was a nice piece of three quarter inch plywood there, but it wasn't paint or anything, it was bare. And so that's actually hanging over the truck and I figured it would be a good idea to paint it before I put the tr camper back on the truck. So I just took a few moments to paint that with some Rust-Oleum glossy white. Uh, again, few, few, very few photos because I was just starting to document everything, but you can imagine a paint process was pretty straightforward. I will say I was suspiciously surprised at how few screws were used in the trim pieces they were just missing a ton of screws so i went ahead and fixed all that up when i repainted the system as well and then the last thing i had to do to the camper to get it ready to be mounted was just put in some fresh eye bolts on the camper i think it had three at the time they were all rusty and old i think some of them were even bent so i just went to the local hardware store and got some new eye bolts i used some big square washers on both sides of the wood um, and drilled some bigger holes because they were more industrious than before uh, the new campers do have four the old ones actually only did have three i ended up installing four and i had to put a little flap in my camper i'll cover that later but pretty easy process to, to, to do. Also what you needed to mount the camper to the truck was some chains and turnbuckles. Again, just the local hardware store for both those. Had some carabiners in there as well. What you do is you just thread your hand through some ports that are in the camper to reach to those mounting bars I installed earlier and turn those turnbuckles and mount everything together once it's on the camper. Again, I was just learning to document, I apologize, but as you know, I'm very good at documenting now, but in 2015 I wasn't, so no pictures of mounting it for the first time using the sketchy tripod jacks or anything like that, but the mounting process went totally fine. I will say we did run into one small hiccup, and that was now that the truck had a bit of a lift on it, that the camper was sitting a little higher than it had been before. It was still in that carport, and so actually the camper wasn't clearing the carport. Uh, what happened was I actually had to take the vent off or the vent wasn't on yet. I don't know, but the vent was off to get it out there. And I also ended up like decreasing the PSI and my tires down to like five PSI. So that it was like really squatting and just kind of barely squeaked the truck out of the carport. And it never went back in the carport after that. So that was a little sketchy, but uh, it all worked out in the end. And that really wraps up this recap video. I just wanted to talk about the few things I did to both the truck and the camper to get it ready for that first mount when I had first gotten everything. That work really did get me operational for the 2015, 2016 ski season. And I did start to use it that year. It was awesome. Still, as you know, this whole thing kind of spiraled into a full rebuild, which I will be talking about in future videos. So the next videos of this series where I'm recapping, will cover about a lot of the painting, a lot of the demo work that I did here, it'll cover uh, how I kind of came to deciding to do a full remodel. It'll cover the few different lifting panels that I put in here. So I actually put in two different sets of lifting panels before I got to these ones, or this is the second set. Um, and it'll just kind of cover this whole process up to those first videos where I'm building the cabinetry in here. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. I do appreciate you tuning in every week. Thank you so much for being here. If you're not already, do consider subscribing. Uh, share these videos with your friends. The more views we get, the more motivated I am to make more of these. So thanks again for watching. Like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.